What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're going to be installing a PAL Hydra Series Bluetooth Marine Amplifier on one of my neighbor's golf carts. One neighbor seen the other neighbor's install and wanted his own, but he didn't want a radio and maybe you guys don't want a radio either. Uh, we picked this right here up for less than 50 bucks, so it's a pretty good deal. I'll place a link in the description below where you can buy one of these as well and check it out. We did some marine speakers on the golf cart as well. I'll show you how I installed those on this video. Uh, pretty simple install, pretty simple video. I like this right here. You don't have to add a radio if you don't want it to on your golf cart, but less than 100 bucks, probably less than 80 bucks, you can get a amplifier and speakers. So I thought it was a pretty good deal, but that's what we're gonna install on today's video. All right guys, so this is my setup, okay? This is two inch aluminum angle. I have a relay, a puck converter, a fuse block, and the Bluetooth Pile Hydra amp. Now, if you're gonna go the same route, just note you can get this amp in white or black, but you get the non-Bluetooth version, the same exact price or a few dollars shy or more, and it's silver, so don't make the mistake of buying a non-bluetooth version if you wanted a bluetooth version i'll be sure to place links to both of them down in the description below now let me show you exactly how i have everything wired and why i have it in this configuration number one the puck converter we have a relay on it so it will turn on and off with the key switch i have a separate video that goes in detail about the relay but it's very simple and let me tell you exactly how that works so i have a relay controlling the dc to dc converter because if you don't put a relay on it, this will stay on at all times and it will drain your batteries. Now, it might not drain them overnight, but a few nights or a week, it'll start draining the batteries pretty good. So I put a relay on it. I have a full video tutorial on just the relay. I go more in depth of that, but a real quick demonstration. The DC to DC converter and the relay is sharing a ground. I'm going to hook this to the main negative of the battery pack. On this right here side of the relay, this is going to the ignition on, okay? One side of the ignition is gonna have power at all times. The other side is gonna be on or off. This is going to the on or off side where it only has power when it, the ignition is in the on position. What that does is it controls this relay. So the relay is getting its ground. We're sending 48 volt signal here and you have your output here which is this red wires to output off of 87, going to a fusible link. That's going into the DC to DC converter. This bottom uh, terminal here, that's pin 30 of the relay. That's going to the main 48 volt pack positive. Okay, this is a 48 volt relay. Don't get confused with a 12 volt or 36 volt. This is a 48 volt relay. I'll place a link to this and everything I'm using in today's video in the description below, okay? So that's the relay. I have a video that goes more in depth on just the relay. The puck converter or the DC to DC converter is sending a ground signal here to the fuse block and sending a power signal here to the fuse block. Now on the amplifier itself, you have a ground wire. I have that going to the ground block of the fuse block. This blue wire here this is kind of like the ignition wire, all right? I have it going to this fusible link right here. The red wire has an inline 10 amp fuse. I have it going directly to the main terminal of the fuse block since it already has a uh, fusible link installed. Now, let's say we would have put this here, then we would have had 20 amps of fusible link, and that's not good because it's gonna take more to burn the fuse out. So. I just put the ignition wire here. I put the red constant wire here. Very simple. We're gonna hook up the speaker wires. We already got the speakers ran. Uh, my neighbor does not want the inputs or the little remote, uh, external remote installed. So we're gonna leave these right here separate. All right, guys, don't give me a hard time, but the golf cart in the back has been on the back burner for so long. It's my wife's cart, and we need to finish building it, but we just haven't. I think I'm going to just go ahead with these right here, ball speakers. 
Uh, this is the same kind of speaker I put in my neighbor's cart and I had in my Cushman. They're a cheap speaker, but they don't sound bad for what they are. Just like that one we did on my neighbor's. I think it had a different name brand on it. It didn't say like Valor or something like that. I can't remember. I will say these do not have that, that gasket on there unless something happened to it. Not sure. Looking on the back of this right here. Packaging here uh, on B here comes up to 5,47. So I'm guessing that's five and a half inches uh, is the hole that we need to drill. All right, so this is the motor cover or controller cover. What I like to do before I cut into any kind of a plastic, I like to put blue painter's tape down. And the reason I like to do that is if I want to mark on it, I can mark on it and uh, not mess up the panel itself. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so I got sidetracked. I was trying to find my compass. Couldn't find it, so I had to run to the store, get one of those, and got sidetracked after doing that. That's why it's not as bright out here as before. But I just, just made some test pieces on this piece of cardboard here before I placed it onto this uh, cover here for the controller motor. I got those holes I drew out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out next, get the speakers mounted so we can go ahead and get this back together. But then there you can see. And what I did is on the box for the speakers, it said 5.47 inches. So I just went two and three quarters of an inch out on the compass there and drew that out. And then I always like to make a test fit first. Hey bud. And test fit looked pretty good. And um, once the test fit looks good, we went ahead and drew them on here. So we can go ahead and cut them out next. All right guys, got both of the holes cut. Perfect fit there, looks pretty good. Got the wires on, connectors on. Looks pretty good. Stick it back in place and let's wire it up. All right, so that piece of aluminum right here where the OBC is at, and this is like the controller mounting plate. It bolts over here on this piece of aluminum here. And that bolt there, it takes a half inch wrench. I'm gonna just go ahead and pull that out, slide it back through the piece of angle and put it back into place. That's what's gonna hold our bracket on today. Now I've just got everything mounted, but I have not zip tied anything. The blinking red light means it's searching for a signal for the Bluetooth signal. A solid red light means it's on and working and connected. So not trying to get into the shot here with my shadow, but we're done. What I like about this the best is, well, you can see the speakers, but you can't see anything else. Nothing on the dash, no switches or anything like that. You know, as far as what we've done today, now there was previous switches on the dash, but um, that doesn't involve the radio. So I like that the best. The relay uh, is in the place of a external switch, so it's hidden. So when you turn the golf cart on, the amp and everything is on, but when you turn it off, everything is off. So there it is. And I get some royalty-free music on here so you can hear it real quick. <laughs> 